Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. We've had quite a lot of fun over the last year really building various projects using PCBs from PCBWay.com. We've made power supplies, we have projects still in progress basically. We have finished ones, milliometer or micrometer was very good, the ring tester was very good and basically I think there's a lot to learn by building these sort of projects because as was the case back in the 70s when I was just a kid doing this, yeah things go wrong and things don't work and by the time you've figured out why, well you've learned quite a lot and that knowledge is what you need really in repair work. I really learned to repair stuff by fixing things that I built that didn't work so that really is a good way to go. I've reached the point where I want to order some more PCBs from PCBWay.com who kindly sponsor this channel so if I request PCBs they will send them to me free of charge I will say and that gives us plenty to play around with for the next 6 to 12 months. The projects we still have in progress in particular are the power supply project, the 0 to 30 volt, 0 to 10 amp, and we will definitely be continuing with that one. We also have the active load, the one that will load USB, but will load other things. This one, if you've been watching the channel, Detlef and myself have been working on this, enhancing the project to give it control over PD USB power supplies, quick charges so we can switch the voltage and also monitoring the voltage current and watts and we have a redesigned version of this PCB so that will be added to the list that we are ordering. Another one that is still in progress, just be on the back burner a little bit but we'll go back to this one soon, so this was the signal injector in a pen, a biro, okay this was the last version and it was too big to fit inside the pen so I want to miniaturize this, I'm going to do it by effectively putting components on both sides of the board, it's not the length, I just need to make it a few millimeters narrower the battery fitted in okay so that wasn't really the problem so I will be ordering the revamped version of those. What I thought we'd do today is have a look around on PCBWay.com and the shared projects. I've had a look myself but I'm inviting you guys to do the same. I've picked out a few projects I thought may well be interesting if not for use just for the educational value of them. But if you guys would like to take a look over the weekend or before the weekend, see what you think, anything else you'd like to add to the list, put the link in the comments. If YouTube won't let you do that, just send me an email to this address you see on the screen now and I can add them to the order. Or come back with a part two and see, well, do you actually want me to build these? Yeah, since I'm going to show you what I have in mind. Other than that, we can build other projects as well. They don't need to be from PCBWay.com as long as you have a Gerber file, ideally, so I can actually just order some PCBs and a schematic. That is great, so that's another possibility we can do. So we have a few days to decide and I shall order in the early part of next week. The projects I have in mind, I will show you now. And they loosely fall into three or four groups probably be five if you can watch. So one of them, I know people have asked about this, is building inverters and simple inverters. Some of you guys want to use these things with something like solar panels, others of you are just interested to see how we can do it and what we can learn from it. So I had a look on PCBWay.com, I haven't found every project for the inverter on there but I found a few. A couple of these, maybe three of them, are actually made by the same guy who did that. USB load up to 35 watts, that was very successful and very simple. So the ones I found are from this guy, Easy One. He produces videos on YouTube, you can see the link in a moment, but they're not in English, so we're gonna see if we can improve on these designs and anglicize them somewhat. But also credit where credit is due, I have a link to the guy's videos who actually produce these. You'll notice, by the way, that PCBWay donate 10% of the cost to the author, so this is basically 
if somebody orders the PCBs, then the author gets 10% of the cost, okay? You pay the normal price on PCB way, PCB way pay the author. So this one is a very simple inverter, 100 watt, and he's using parts all salvaged from an ATX power supply. Tells us what we want, some MOSFETs, Zenit diodes, that's basically it really, the transformer from an ATX power supply. I was interested to see how this circuit actually works, and I went to the link on here for the schematic I can show you. And there it is. So, this appears to be a self-oscillating circuit as far as I can see. I'm no particular expert on these, but 12 volts in. There seems to be a coil here, possibly part of the feedback, but again, we will learn, no doubt, how this actually works. From what I can see, it's a self-oscillating circuit and it drives the secondary normally of the transformer the 12 volt winding and it uses the ATX transformer backwards to generate the 220 volts so we can certainly have a look at that one to see how well it works all the parts here are very easy to find so probably cost nothing we'll try to use some salvage mosfets and other parts and let's see what we do with that one he also has another one this is a square wave generator CMOS chip okay he says this is to make an inverter I'm not sure exactly he has a video on YouTube so we can have a quick look well there's the thing you must use this with a transformer I'm just gonna quick skip along on here okay yes we can see how this is working so he has a transformer center tapped transformer this time so we can try some of these pcbs and see how well they work we have a third one this time using discrete transistors this guy certainly likes to build inverters okay i think yes yeah, so this is using a couple of transistors a couple of mosfets will be effectively an oscillator, probably uses this to drive a transformer again, like the last one we had a look at, so we can get some of those PCBs. And the last one is another contributor on here, much more complicated, much more higher powered. Be very interesting to see if we can get this to work. Uses a TL494, this is the common control chip in a lot of ATX power supply, so we can take one from an old ATX power supply. I'm not sure at the moment what else we need for this. Interesting how he's reinforced the tracks here, look here. And again, he's using a transformer 12012 center tapped. Okay, so that's another one we can play with. So there's some inverters. What else do we have? Well, another thing people have asked me to do is to build a switch mode power supply. So I have some projects here that are in this theme, basically. This is a switching power supply, small dimensions. It says can produce no more than 600 watts, but then it says it's a 60 watt power supply. I think I noticed somewhere, so one or the other is incorrect. We can have a play around with that. This could be a lot of fun to build. It looks like we have to do some transformer winding. And to be quite honest, if something goes wrong with this one, it could go quite spectacularly wrong, yes. Yeah, so we're, that's one we can look at. Here is another one. This is a 0 to 35 volt, 0 to 30 amp. Uh, 30 amp supply. Again, this is a switching power supply by the looks of it. Yes, it looks like it is a switching power supply. Let's have a look on YouTube. So this is a Russian channel. Again, I'll give credit to where it is due. Let's see how this one works. Okay. Schematic. This looks like some sort of book converter. If you look at it, not MOSFET, but they're using a transistor to switch one end of a coil by the looks of it. 
yeah, this looks like a high frequency buck converter type thing. TL494 common port again from ATX power supplies. I think this would be really quite interesting. Yeah, wind some beads and such like, okay. And there it is. So this is something we can build without having to worry about having to find heavy duty transformers and such like, okay. That looks like a lot of fun to me. So we have that one. And one more power supply is this one, which I found. Again, this is a similar thing, but this is using a transformer here. Okay, and he's saying the transformer is a part found in ATX power supplies required a recoil. Okay, tells us what we need to do. I have never recoiled a transformer in my life, so I'm thinking maybe some of you guys haven't either. So let's see how that works out, okay? But this isn't all about inverters and power supplies. There are a few other interesting things I found. One is another constant current electronic load. This is designed using an Intel 775 cooling fan. Uh, 90 watt load, actually stable at 120 watts. So that looks like it could be rather interesting to build. We can see what we have there. Various protections, overheating, over current, over power, reverse, okay. We can see the schematic for this one. This looks like it's microcontroller based. We can just get to zoom in a bit, maybe. Well, we can, but we can't see it very well, so that could be fun. I'm pretty sure we can actually find a properly viewable schematic. So that's another one I'm interested to build. Yeah, it has a display on the front. Active loads are quite expensive things to buy, so that could be interesting. And then some unusual things. So this is a transformer dot convention finder. On the schematic, you will find these dots at the end of transformer windings. This basically tells you the phase of the winding so that when this end of the primary is on the positive half cycle, one end or the other of the other winding will be on the positive half cycle. It depends on the direction of the winding, but you can't normally figure that out. So it could be interesting to build this. So this looks like it drives the primary of a transformer and you connect the transformer across these four terminals and one LED or the other will light up at the other end to show you which end is in phase with the primary, okay? That could be very interesting. We can use this, I'm pretty sure, to find multiple windings on the same transformer. Just leave the primary attached and then connect to the different secondaries in turn across here to see how the phases apply between the different windings. That I thought could be quite fun. A few standard parts, 555 timer, probably an oscillator, an op amp or dual op amp, this IC4030. That will be some sort of CMOS device, nothing else really of any unusual origins on that. Yeah, fairly standard components. This I think will be worth a look. Just an example to show you how Transformer does. Let's have a look what he has. And the second... So we can see the timer, we can see the op amps. I'm not sure where the other chip is here actually. There's another part, there's another part of this circuit. Okay, so it's an exclusive OR gate. Yeah, and that drives one LED or the other. Exclusive OR will give a logic one output when either one input or the other is high, but not when they're both high. I'm pretty sure we can work out how that actually determines the phase, okay? It looks like to me, that we drive the primary, and that is monitored by this one. And the secondary is monitored by this, yeah. So when both these inputs go high together, it'll give a high on both outputs, and the bottom lights will light up if one's high, one's low. The other one lights, yeah. Let's build that, could be rather fun. Another PCB I want to order is this one, dual op-amp test board. 
This is not really for testing op amps. This is for learning how to use them. I think this will actually be a really good thing to use as a tutorial. A lot of people have asked me to do op amps. I will do all you need to know about op amps to fix stuff and what better to use than this because we have all the test points all laid out just like we would see in a circuit we can change components easily the op amp actually goes here look this is where it actually fits we can put sockets on here and that'll be really good i think so i will definitely order some of these i think that'd be a great tutorial aid for the channel and the last one i found with a precision low frequency oscillator for testing subwoofers so 10 hertz to 90 hertz and 0 0.1 hertz resolution for testing subwoofers this looks like it's another microcontroller based project we have detlef here of course now who is an expert on that topic so this will definitely be a joint effort as will some of the other projects on here so guys that's what i have in mind i'm going to order these pcbs there's one or two other projects that detlef and myself have been working on in the background so we'll order those as well at the same time and it's up to you now anything you'd like to see bear in mind we'll probably have enough here to last us the rest of the year maybe it's the next year so get some suggestions in i can't order everything but anything that sounds or looks interesting we can order this time Lots to do there then, lots of fun, lots of plans to make. I am confident we will definitely be learning stuff while we're doing this, which will help us in our knowledge of electronics and our knowledge of repair work. Plus build one or two handy gadgets while we're at it. Okay, so looking forward to hearing from you all in the comments below, down there. And I also look forward to seeing you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.